Hi, it's Tuesday evening, September 19th. We're going to get to Maria in a minute, but let's start with Hurricane Jose off of New England, uh, continuing to spin away here, not weakening very fast yet. Uh, it is a very large system with a gigantic wind field and a large radius of maximum wind, not much of an inner core here, and uh, the low-level center has become exposed from time to time, but continues to fire some convection as it is under low shear, and it's only just now beginning to move in the colder water. Uh, where's the Gulf Stream here? If you look really closely, you'll see a band of enhanced cumulus right here. And uh, this is where the Gulf Stream turns down from the coast of the Carolinas and then turns like this. And so Jose is just now beginning to move into the area of much colder water up here, where it will really begin to weaken as time goes on. But it is going to stick around and it will not dissipate quickly. It has a huge wind field. You can see it raking already the mid-Atlantic and New England coastlines with the most outer bands, some rainfall and gusty winds here. And there are water rises along the coast due to this wind field pushing water up against the coastline. So water levels are above normal. This is the Hurricane Center forecast again. Not expected to pass very close, but you can see this gigantic wind field in orange will be impinging upon portions of the New England coastline and tropical storm warnings and watches are still up from Long Island through the Cape Cod area of Massachusetts. And uh, so winds over 40 miles an hour are possible here. Uh, not much worse than a nor'easter per se uh, for this sort of area, but certainly some nasty disruptive weather. And again, water rises, heavy rain, gusty winds, that sort of thing, a stormy couple of days ahead as Jose is not going anywhere quickly. And over the next five days, we'll still be in the vicinity, although weaker by the time we get into the weekend. And you can see it hangs around here. And again, this becomes relevant for Maria down the road. In fact, very relevant. Uh, in the longer range. And here is Hurricane Maria in the northeastern Caribbean and uh, it's kind of hard to find the words to describe what's going on here. This is nothing short of a ridiculous hurricane at this point. Uh, after passing over Dominica last night with a direct landfall and uh, the news out of there so far hasn't been much but it's it's been bad. Reports of many roofs being taken off of buildings and to likely extensive damage to most properties similar to what happened when Hurricane Irma passed over Barbuda not even two weeks ago and uh, honestly Maria is rivaling Irma's intensity as record-setting as that was Maria is catching it up very fast. The recon data coming out of this storm today as I am recording this video the last drops on measurement was 910, likely 909. The latest pass that hasn't yet had a drops on confirmation looks to be about 905, 906 millibars, much lower than Irma's pressure ever was. And the winds are, are very quickly getting there with the last reliable data indicating that surface winds are likely near 175 miles per hour near this tiny eye, less than 10 miles wide of Hurricane Maria. And uh, this is every bit as extreme as Irma and joins Irma in being the most extreme kind of hurricane you will ever see in the Northeastern Caribbean, just bar none, the most extreme storm you've ever seen here. And this, this is the danger of this to the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico cannot be overstated at this point. Don't be numb to this language. It's not used in every storm. It's been used already with Harvey and Irma this year. So I understand if it sounds like it's being overused. This is real. It's as real as it gets. This is very, very, very bad for the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Please take it with seriousness. You need to be in a very sturdy structure to survive the kind of winds that are coming with this eye wall. You want to be in a very sturdy shelter for this. And you want to be away from the water and flood zones because the storm surge being pushed with the system could bring uh, flood waters of over 11 feet above dry ground from the ocean being pushed ashore in these islands and Puerto Rico. And that is the most life-threatening aspect of these storms. As much as we talk about the wind, and the wind here is indeed extreme and life-threatening, but the water always is more fatal. And you especially want to make sure that you're out of the ocean flood zone for the surge being pushed ashore. Pay attention to NWS San Juan, National Weather Service San Juan, your local officials and uh, local officials in the Virgin Islands for information on how to keep yourself safe in these areas if you haven't left for this storm 
and uh, time is running out for preparations. Already wind gusts to 63 miles per hour in St. Croix, and this is going to be a close call here. Here's the radar out of San Juan showing the eye approaching, and uh, if the eye doesn't make a direct landfall on St. Croix, it may be close, and only a little wobble to the right here could bring a direct impact to the island, and uh, keep in mind that even if the small eye wall misses St. Croix, it's going to be close, and I'm really watching this outer band here. You can see there's the inner eye wall, and there's this ring this convective ring around it. This is attempting to form a secondary eye wall. It's struggling a little bit now, but it, it may be trying to form a secondary eye wall. And these can be quite intense because the winds in this band are ferocious compared to the other stuff around it. These winds are well in excess of potentially 100 miles per hour in this band by the time it gets to St. Croix. And so this is nothing to take lightly, even if you happen to be lucky and miss the inner eye wall that goes for anybody in here, even if you miss the tiny inner eye right now. The wind field is unfortunately getting a little larger today. Recon data indicates that all this stuff in purple here is near or at hurricane force and uh, this extends now many dozens of miles from the eye in the northeastern quadrant, winds over about 60 miles per hour or so. And this is going to be dangerous because it's going to be pushing more ocean water, so again, storm surge flooding gets worse, and it's a larger area of life-threatening winds that can damage structures, especially weaker ones here in these islands. So unfortunately, this is starting to grow a bit, and we are watching for an eye wall replacement cycle. That can be the one thing that can weaken the top winds, is if this outer band here really closes off into a ring that starts competing with this very intense inner eye that has not yet occurred. But what we're seeing now is that there is a secondary wind maximum developing on recon data with this band, and it's looking more ring-like on radar as time goes on. So there's a chance that an eye wall replacement will start occurring as the system nears Puerto Rico tonight and tomorrow. However, it's important to realize that even if some of the top winds are knocked off, we're going from maybe 175 miles per hour to maybe, in a best case scenario, 150 mile per hour winds if a significant eye wall replacement cycle occurs, and 150 mile per hour winds can still be potentially catastrophic, and so at this point there's no way to avoid an extreme hit to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and this is virtually guaranteed at this point to make a direct landfall somewhere in here. Exactly where along the coast of Puerto Rico, not sure, but it seems unavoidable at this point, and it's going to be close for some of these islands. And again, impacts extend well away, especially to the north of the center and they are dangerous. And uh, flash flooding also possible in the mountainous terrain of Puerto Rico here. Uh, up to two feet of rain or more could fall, and these mudslides and flash flooding can also be a threat to life and property. As this continues to move slowly toward the west-northwest at only about 10 miles per hour, it may not be until tomorrow morning or even tomorrow afternoon, perhaps, that the, the eye actually moves into Puerto Rico. It will be in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands before that, uh, later tonight and by tomorrow afternoon this will be crossing the island and remember just because the eye is coming in on the southern part of the island and you might say oh there's mountains in the middle that's going to disrupt the storm right that's correct but it's going to be moving over you know Puerto Rico's not that large by the time it gets to the northern edge of the uh, of the of the the island here, it's still going to be very, very strong and dangerous, and places like San Juan, just because you're on the northern side, that's not necessarily going to protect you very much, unfortunately. So as the eye comes across, it's st still going to be extremely life-threatening on the other side, and again, whether or not this actually makes a direct hit on a specific city or location uh, in Puerto Rico with the inner eye, you know, not sure, but you do not want to gamble with this, and even if you miss the inner eye, it's still life-threatening outside of that. And you do not want to gamble with this. Please be safe and to heed local officials and National Weather Service San Juan for the latest information to help keep yourself protected. As this extreme storm nears, the danger cannot be overstated. Please take it seriously. As the forecast continues through tomorrow into Thursday, a close pass northeast of the Dominican Republic is expected and a hurricane warning is in effect for that reason. A little shift to the left could bring the core very close and we'll be watching for that. And even if uh, we don't get the eye close to the coast, heavy rainfall south of the center uh, can cause mudslides and flash flooding in the high mountains of Hispaniola that can also be life-threatening there. And a hurricane watch is in effect for the Turks and Caicos and portions of the southeastern Bahamas as the core could again get close to these islands and any leftward shift could be quite bad for those regions as Puerto Rico is not likely to weaken the hurricane drastically, uh, but some weakening will occur but not, not a drastic amount. This will remain an extreme 
hurricane throughout this forecast track um, as it stands now. And then a turn to the north is likely some weakening is shown here later in the period after it passes the Bahamas due to perhaps increasing wind shear. A little uncertain on that until we get it past Puerto Rico. We won't know much until it, it passes the islands here and we see what happens to the north, but likely to remain strong nonetheless. And uh, as we get to day five here, again, if you're looking beyond this, uh, if you're in the mainland United States wondering if this can come west, there's still a chance that it could become a threat later down the road. This is the GFS 500 millibar forecast for Saturday, so four days out here. And uh, this would be Hurricane Maria north of the Bahamas, and here's what's left of Hurricane Jose. And again, uh, Jose is really potentially a saving grace here because we have this ridge to the, the east of uh, Maria, the northeast of Maria, and then this ridge over the Great Lakes. And if Jose was not here, then these two ridges would likely be connected in a way that would force the storm into the southeastern United States. However, since Jose is sitting here, it leaves a break in the ridge that could allow Maria to sneak out to the northeast relatively harmlessly out to sea uh, if it's not near Bermuda. And this is very, very possible, and a lot of model solutions indeed show this, which is good news. However, it's don't let your guard down yet, because uh, if Jose is weaker or in a different position, maybe farther east, and this ridge is allowed to build in a little more near Bermuda, then it could force the storm a little closer to the eastern seaboard of the United States with time. And uh, it's not yet off the table that that could occur. So it's something to keep an eye out for. But if it does happen, it wouldn't be until sometime next week. So there's still a lot of time to monitor Maria as uh, she moves slowly toward the northwest over the southwestern Atlantic. But have a hurricane plan ready. If, you know, what all we've seen this year with Harvey and Irma and now Maria, if that hasn't convinced you to have a hurricane plan ready, I don't know what to say to you, but have one ready just in case. It's always good to be prepared, and you definitely want that if you're in the eastern U.S., just in case Maria draws near next week. We'll keep an eye out for that and let you know if that happens. Uh, that's it for tonight. We'll continue to watch Jose near New England again much like a nor'easter here, uh, but the main story will, of course, be Maria, and uh, we hope for the safety of everyone in this region of the world to the Leeward Islands, uh, for the safety of the people in D Dominica, which dealt with a major landfall last night, and uh, the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico as a direct landfall is likely for them of an even stronger storm than Dominica faced yesterday. So please be safe, everyone. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.